Hey everybody, it's me and I am back with project number two where we're going to analyze some data about diamonds to help Hunter find the best value and highest quality pair of diamond earrings for his wife. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create three scatter plots in question number one. We're going to plot price against color, clarity, and carrots. And what you should end up with is three scatter plots that follow this format. Scatter plot itself needs to be labeled. You need to have each of your axes labeled. You need to add a trend line and show the R square value. What you're going to do after you've created them is interpret them and determine what kind of relationship each plot suggests. And I want that to be based on both visual interpretation as well as the R squared value. Those explanations or interpretations of the plots need to go into your Word document. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to run three different regression models. So here's an example of what one of them would look like. Um, we're going to use x1 and x3, then you're going to use x3 and x2, and then you're going to use all three of them, x1, x2, and x3. So when you're done, you should have your summary output and a regression equation. Be sure that you are substituting the name of the predictor variable for x1 and x3. So in other words, a proper regression equation looks like y hat equals, and then your intercept, and then your coefficient times the name of the variable, then plus or minus coefficient times the name of your variable. And so you're going to do this three times. When you're done, what you should be able to do is to create a chart that includes the R square, adjusted R square, and the P values for your three different variables. Then you're going to go back to the beginning of question number two and answer if Hunter wanted to build a linear regression model to estimate earring price, which variables would you recommend he use and why? This is where you're going to use the results of those three regression runs in order to explain or suggest which variables Hunter should use. We're going to move on to looking at what would happen if he decided to use x2 and x3, and that's question number three. So here's an example of what I'm looking for. So I want an estimated regression equation constructed properly, and then I want you to report the value of R squared and adjusted R squared, and explain why there is a difference between the two statistics. That needs to be done in your Word document. Um, when I graded project one, the majority of points that were lost were lost because of the lack of depth of the analysis. So you need to not only be able to run these regressions, you need to be able to tell me what they tell you or what they mean. Once you've finished with that, you're going to come back to the data sheet and you are going to complete four new columns. Column E, we're going to do the estimate, then we're going to do a ratio, you're going to determine whether the earrings are under or overvalued, and then determine which of the pairs of earrings is the best value. In 4A, um, we're going to use the trend function in Excel, which is literally going to take the variable values and plug them into that regression equation that you came up with in number three. And the known Ys, of course, is going to be your price. 
the known x's are going to be what is in x2 and x3, which are your carats and clarity. And the new values that you want the trend to return, which are your y hat or predicted variables, since we're using um, clarity and carats for the new x's, you're going to enter b3 colon c3, which is basically going to tell Excel to use price and then these two values in order to predict this estimate here. The next column is going to be which ones are the best value. And we're going to begin by calculating the ratio. And the ratio is simply price divided by estimate. And estimate, remember, is the predicted value of y. So we're going to take price divided by estimate and come up with a ratio. A ratio of under 1, less than 1, is going to make them underpriced. A ratio larger than 1 will make them overpriced. Do that in column G. We're going to, in 4B, use a if statement, which is going to be basically looking at the minimum and then having Excel tell us which pair of earrings is the best value. So we're going to use the results of our regression and then create a predicted estimated value of what the earring should sell for, the ratio of price to estimate, a determination of whether they're undervalued or overvalued, and then finally which is the best value based on the regression model that we select. When you get to number five, we're going to create three new interaction terms. We're going to take color times clarity, and that becomes x4. Color times carats is x5. Clarity times carat is x6. And the way you get those values is literally take the value of color times the value of clarity and that becomes color times clarity. So you'll create your three new x variables. From there, I'm going to ask you in number six to now prepare three individual scatter plots, just like you did before, but this time we're going to show the relationship between the earring price, y, and each of the interaction variables. So what you should have for number six is you should have three scatter plots that look similar to this. They're showing that price, your y variable, was plotted against the interaction term of color times clarity. I've asked you to add the trend line. I've asked for the r squared value on each line. They need to be titled and then in 6b and c, I want to know what kind of relationship does each plot suggest. Um, again, use a visual interpretation as well as your r square value. And then finally, in 6c, on your Word document again, which of the interaction variables would you recommend that Hunter include in his model? Um, if you don't think he should include any interaction terms, then that's your answer. Now we've made it all the way to number seven. Hunter decides he's going to use x1 color, x3 carats, and two of our interaction terms, x4 and x5. And so we're going to run the regression using those four variables. And so I need the regression equation properly formatted. I need r squared and adjusted r squared and most importantly, an explanation of some of the reasons that there's a difference between the adjusted R square of this model and the model without the interaction terms. What happens to our R squared and adjusted R square when we add interaction terms? In number eight, we're going to use that last model with the x1, x3, x4, and x5. We're going to do the exact same thing that you did before. We're going to come up with an estimate, and that estimate is going to be your trend function, known y 
again is going to be price your known X's are going to be the values in your X data range chart because all I did was take the variables that I needed for my model and put them into a chart. It's just easier than picking and choosing among columns. Um, and then the new values are going to be what we want the trend to return. Then I want to know which of them are overpriced and underpriced. Again, that's creating that ratio of price divided by estimate. Same rules apply, undervalued or overvalued. In column J, you're going to compare the value in the ratio column to the price, determine if they're under or overvalued, and then again, determine which of those is the best value. And that's going to be your if statement. And in 8B, I've given you um, information on how to construct that statement. So you're doing the same thing here that you did at the beginning. So it's kind of the same thing twice. Last but not least is number nine. You've helped Hunter construct a pretty complex regression model to help him with his decision. But before you turn this in, you need to provide a summary. And that summary is going to cover the reliability of regression analysis, especially when we're incorporating multiple independent variables and interaction terms. So things you're going to want to consider here are things such as multicollinearity, overfitting a model, what happens when we try and interpret a model that's been overfit, model validation, and don't forget that we have some basic assumptions that we have to make anytime we use regression analysis to predict an outcome. So that needs to be a substantial um, couple of paragraphs at the end. You will then submit your completed template and your Word or PDF file through Canvas. As always, the offer stands. If you get your project or a draft of it done um, early, I'm happy to look at it and give you some honest feedback. Um, if you're, you know, want me to look at it after you've only run the first set of regression, that's fine. It doesn't make any difference. Email me, message me in Canvas. You can text me. Um, you can come see me during posted office hours or you can reach out to me and we'll set a one-on-one -on -one time when we can get together and look at your work. So I look forward to seeing what you do. You know how to find me.